So in the past, I have been very negative about a sports card channel called Sports Card Investor. Uh, but the one thing I've always pointed out is that he does what he believes he is telling you. So if he tells you it's a good time to buy cards, he will buy cards himself and show the cards off with real prices. I appreciate that. That is actually quite transparent given what other people in this space have done. You know, not to be a dead horse, but Alpha Investment, he sells standard cards. Even opening them off camera, you know, are not live. I think in the comment, I don't know if this is true, that there is some neon card that is one out of so many packs and he opened a bunch of packs and he didn't pull it. Well, I kind of know what happened to that Neon card, if you understand what I'm saying. That Neon card was a $3,000, $4,000 buy list card. I think it was in Kamagawa. So wow, surprisingly, he didn't pull it. I would be more surprised if he pulled two of them, right? I mean, the chance of him pulling two of them apparently is the same chance of him pulling zero, right? But you know, you pulled zero. So. I give all the credit to Sports Card Investor because he does what he says. What, when he recommends something, like he says, you know what, I'm buying because the cards are cheap. I'm buying LeBron. He will go out and buy LeBron and then show off the physical cards that he owns. So that's rare. What you normally have in Alpha Investment, Sports Cards, Magic is people tell you, hey, buy my standard shit you know, I'll, I'll even open the standard shit off camera for you, you know, not live. And if I hit a neon card, I'm gonna put it in my pocket. Nobody know the difference. Nobody would know the difference, right? What if he hit 20 neon cards and they all went to his pocket? Nobody would know, right? Nobody would know, like, how would you know? So there are plenty of people, I'm not just gonna pick on that one guy, but I will pick on more people. There are plenty of people in sports, especially in Pokemon. Pokemon is mad desperate right now, who tell you X and they do Y. They tell you, hey, this standard set is amazing. And then they sell you some boxes and then they buy your reserve list cards on the back end. And people are like, oh, well, you knew that. You know, no, 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 you don't know that because you're a brand new player. You think that these standard boxes will actually go up in price and you should sell your older cards that you had since you were a child to this one taco dude, a guy in a taco stand. And uh, I mean, at some point in time, yes, it is on the consumer to behave appropriately and the consumer is always being ripped off. You do have to question why is the consumer not educated to the point that they know that they're being ripped off. But it, it's easy when you trust somebody, you trust them. I mean, you know, why do, why is there Stockholm Syndrome? That's the dude who kidnapped you. Now you're gonna help him get away? You're gonna help them steal more money? Like there's a lot of psychology things where we would think a consumer would be a rational human being, but many times they're not. Why are they massively in debt all the time? Why are they buying the fifth TV or the 10th Lambo when they can't even pay off the ninth? There are pl plenty of times that the consumer, like uh, the gambling, right? The casino, we all know stake.com is paying these influencers a lot of money to gamble. But then why do people still get very excited when a person who's using house money essentially wins? And he's like, oh, that could be me. Even though you know that the dude's getting paid to make this promotion video and whatever money he lost or made isn't real, right? Um, there's been coffee Ziller has done. There's been so many different cases of this being true where you know that it's a rug pull, but you still want to believe, I guess that's the best way I can put it. It's like aliens, right? On the history channel. Anyone watch the history channel after like 10 PM, it starts getting really weird, right? Cause I think there's like the owner of the history. There's gotta be some person up in the top of the history channel who actually believes in aliens. Like, because some way they're always promoting it. And then you might be like, oh, why do so many people believe in Bigfoot, even though we've never actually seen him, we've never captured a Bigfoot. And you would think with all the hikers, the technology, the, the drones, I mean, God forbid, everyone got a drone up there flying around, right? The deforestation that we would have found if there was a Bigfoot, if there was a trooper cobbler or any of these mythical animals, 
why have we not captured it and put it in a zoo? Because that obviously is a multi-billion dollar invest. Uh, I mean, I mean, imagine you captured the Loch Ness monster. Well, you know, the whole economy of that little that town Loch. I think the town's called Loch Ness or something. It's like a billion dollar economy with the Nessie. And now you've got one. Like, are you kidding me? Like, why, why would we not capture one? Because it would be worth so much money to whoever got one. Or mermaid, or any of these sea kraken, or blah, 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 blah. So, I think it's very... I have a lot of cat hair, because my cat has been running around. I think it is very, very good that Jeff Wilson now, do I agree that's a good time to buy? I actually agree with him. But if I disagreed, I would tell you I disagreed, but at the very least, I would still respect the fact that he believes it. It's one thing to not believe in aliens and use aliens to promote your cafe in Roswell, and you don't believe, you don't, you don't believe, this is a cash grab. It's another thing if you actually believe in aliens, you know, those type of people tend to be very poor. They're not very commercialized, right? Because they're just in the bottom of a basement, right? In these movies all the time, just being like flat broke. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that Jeff Wilson is actually a real believer, which I give him all the credit for being. I'm saying other people in this industry, they promote box breaks and they say, oh, you can hit this, you can hit that, life changing. They have zero risk. If they do hit the card, they themselves become more famous than you will be because they're the ones who pull the card for you. There's zero risk and the, the value, you buy a $1,500 box of select, you'd be lucky to break, you'd be lucky to break $50 from that box, that entire box. You'd be lucky to break, you know, $1,000 would be the best, I, the only, the best box of select I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them. I've been studying these live streaming channels basically would break even at the $1,500 mark. And a $1,200 card, raw, right? Again, you can't use graded because again, the card that you pulled was not graded. So I hate when they say, oh, this is the PSA 10. Well, how do you know it's gonna get a PSA 10? You don't, then why do you keep saying it? Because you pulled a raw card. So you should be looking at raw card comp, not the PSA 10 comp. Um, of that card, right? So anyway, hey, give credit where the credit is due. Jeff Wilson, he's a real one. Um, and you don't see very many of those on YouTube. So even though I disagree with some of his advice, I I recognize, recognize that he's not, he's telling you something. And I've always, I've said that you can watch my old videos, even though the video is highly critical of this guy. If he tells you, that it's time to buy LeBron and Michael Jordan. I know he bought Michael Jordan and LeBron just recently. And then he'll show it to you. Mad respect to him because not many people in the sports card, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon hobby, especially Pokemon hobby, none of those, I mean, they're in the Pokemon hobby, they're pretending cards that they own 10% of, 5% of, less than that are theirs. You know, half the people flexing their Pokemon cards don't own them. There's some type of timeshare type of deal, which makes sense because none of them have jobs. So like, it's like, how can you own a $110,000 card when you've never worked a day in your life? Oh, you know, I own part of the card. <laughs> Guys, imagine trying to buy these mother effing cards out where it's like 10 different owners and you're just like, I'm just like, no, no, this is not real. Is this real? And then like, oh, anyway. 